Thank you, thank you, thank you, Rachel. Awesome. Um, okay, so what I was going to say is uh, we've we've got to. <laughs> it's going to sound strange, but we've got to get our lunch before the football. Some a bunch of big football guys grab it uh, shortly after um, noon. So we're going to try to go um, uh, go quickly and live light on the land for the next uh, forty or so minutes. Um, get uh, networks into a model. And um, later we'll be building up a model from scratch um, when we don't have to compete with the footballers, uh, build up a model from scratch involving networks. This time we'll add networks into an existing model that we've already built, okay? So specifically, um, we built yesterday a model that was called smoking and heart disease version four. Do you remember that? For those who don't have it handy or wish to use a pre-existing uh, version by me, you could go to models built in class under the participant resources and go download smoking and heart disease version four. Uh, but um, I suspect that most of you will, um, will, will have uh, recourse to it through your own um, through your own um, machination. So I went and I opened it here, okay? Um, uh, great. Uh, so I went and I opened it and here's version four. Now I'm gonna start working on it and I'm gonna start working version five. So I'm gonna say version five. You notice the best practice that I'm illustrating here. It's really valuable to, remember I talked about building up in this last session, building up a model incrementally. It's valuable to save it away successive versions of it. You may at some point put together a manuscript based on results and you want to know exactly what version was used for those results, exactly what scenarios were used for those results, et cetera. And one of the best investments you can make in traceability is to keep track of the different versions and save them away. Now, there's some really rich technical ways for those familiar with that. Someone like Wang Jing might be familiar with Git, for example, and you could use Git to store versions of models. Git is for software development, or and it's used very popular now in machine learning, et cetera. But, um, uh, but at the least, you want to save away versions of models with different names for successive versions, okay? Okay, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, you may recall we have this model, we have people and, who are in one of three states, um, never smoker, current smoker, and former smoker, and they have either a healthy heart or heart disease. So my job is in the next half hour to, um, to take this model and start to move it in the direction where we can take into account peer pressure effects on smoking. Right now, initiation in the model, uh, the number of people who are never a smoker, current smoker, former smoker, are endogenous, they're calculated, the model generates them. But the initiation rate, is this in the model right now, as it is, is this endogenous or exogenous? Clearly it's, it's um, it's uh, represented in the model. Is it endogenous or exogenous? Anyone? Thank you, Murphy. It's exogenous indeed. It is specified to the model right now. So if we go look at our scenarios amongst other things, we'll find they're specifying the initiation rate. It's specified in Maine, specified to Maine by the, so Maine, it lives in Maine, and it's specified to mean by each scenario, what the initiation rate. It's exogenous. We tell it to the model. Endogenous things are things the model tells to us, an endogenous thing. This is exogenous, as Rachel aptly noted. Thank you, Rachel. Um, okay, so um, what we're going to do here is we are going to take this model and we are going to add in networks to this model, okay? Um, 
and uh, we could do this uh, in a um, in a couple of ways. Um, I'm going to do a way that's quick, uh, and uh, we're going to uh, use that to talk after lunch about some aspects of networks more generally, and 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 talk where we could take this, etc. So I'd like you to go to Maine. Go down Maine, and I'd like you to find the space and network area in Maine. And I would like you, in that space and network area, make sure it's expanded. And I'd like you to choose for network type a distance-based network, okay? Um, and the connection range will be 75, 75, okay? Which is uh, 75. Okay, so I'll show you visually in just a moment. Great question. The question was, what does 75 mean? And it turns out that um, just like we have times in this package where, you know, one, one in terms of time means one year or one day or one, one hour, depending on the time unit we set for the model. So it turns out that space, and Saab can see it up here, that space has a certain meaning. And we can actually choose um, what scale we want for space. So, so by default, um, each of these grid squares is one meter. Um, uh, and uh, this is therefore uh, 10, 10 meters here. Uh, but we can go uh, change that uh, readily uh, by, by specifying. So for the time unit, we will specify it in the model as a whole with model time units. And uh, for, for spatial layout, my recollection is that it is, and Wade is gonna have to help me here. Um, on that that scale, actually, if you click on the scale, oh, okay, thank you, thank you. you. Can edit its yeah, th there we go. Yeah, um, thank you. So ruler length corresponds to ten kilometers or ten meters or what have you, and we could change these um, to be a scale that we find preferable. Um, when we start to talk, Saab, about geographic models. Um, this issue of scale will be quite central because we'll be, and we'll be able to zoom in and zoom out on the geography, et cetera. Okay, um, so we've we've set there to be in Maine, for those who didn't capture it, and TAs, please, please engage in deploying behavior. Um, please exhibit deployment behavior. Um, in space and network, remember we changed it in Maine, make sure it's Maine, it's a distance base and a connection range to 75. Mm -hmm. um, and next, I'd like you, in the interest of time, to go to person. And you'll notice that each person is a set of connections here, okay? So each person has uh, connections and they're going to be connected to agents of type person, okay? So I've just changed that to be agent type person here. So each person has a set of default connections. They can actually have more than one set and we'll cover that in a minute. They can have multiple networks, an IDU network, a social network, uh, uh, proximity network, et cetera. Right now, this is just, we're using one type. They're connected to persons. And we're gonna go to the animation area and we're going to check the box of draw line connecting agents. Okay. So we're gonna connect to people if they lie, if and only if they lie within 75, a distance of 75 meters uh, uh, of each other right now, okay? We could obviously change that to be smaller. We're going to run the baseline. First of all, make sure it builds. Make sure it's a happy camper by pressing this button here. 
and it is. It says build completed successfully. Build is, it's getting it ready to run. And now we right click on it on baseline small and I'm going to run it. And what do we see here, ladies and gentlemen? We see a what? A network. And you'll notice that two people are connected together if they're close by, specifically if they lie within 75 spatial units or 75 meters here uh, of each other, right? Um, so a given pair is connected if and only if they lie within 75 meters of one another. And so we will have chance clusters, right? Right now it's random placement. We could make the placement depend on socioeconomic status, or we could have it depend on family um, status. Uh, people, you know, um, that are grouped in families uh, live nearby or live in the same household and connect them. So, did you have a question? No, I just wanted to make a comment, and you're also going to see with uh, the one that never spoke, with more hard to say when they're in a chain of a group of people who probably don't have much. Okay, good. So we're going to add in some factors that might drive that correlation of like smokers might might be more likely to cluster together here and 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 be located nearby each other. So let's let's go let's go work at that, okay? Um so we're going to close this right now. We we have a network structure imposed. This is one of Something like five or so types of networks that are have built in support uh, by this particular package, including what are called Poisson random, or, or they're also called Erdos random. They're also called Bernoulli networks. That's another type. There, there's also uh, uh, a, a type that's called a small world network, uh, a ring lattice network, where people are kind of arranged in a certain linear ordering. Um, and there's something called a scale-free network. These are common constructs and well-known in areas such as social network analysis, um, uh, such as it's used you know, with contact tracing data, et cetera. We're gonna take this um, uh, model and we're gonna modify it to take advantage of the network, okay? So specifically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce something that is going to affect the initiation rate. Right now, the initiation rate is is, endo is exogenous. It's fixed. It's pre-specified. That's what we mean by exogenous. It's called to the model. And it's independent of social context. I want to make it dependent on social context. Specifically, I'm going to modify this so that a, per, a given person's propensity to start smoking within the next little bit of time is going to depend on the number of their immediate connections who are smokers, who are current smokers. Are we okay with that? And I'm gonna learn you a few things in the process. Is that okay? Okay, hearing no objections, I'm gonna, I'm gonna proceed. Um, I'm gonna learn you a thing, a, a thing or two here, okay. So one thing I'm gonna teach you about is something called a function, okay? Um, and to see the function, you, you go over to the agent palette and it's in the agent palette, it's called function, okay? And this is not referring to like a social event, like a, like a gala or something. This is, uh, this function is referring to something that um, that performs some job. It's it's some uh, bit of logic that will perform some 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 job. It'll undertake some function. It'll undertake a, a certain task. And this function, so I dragged it in. I dragged in a function to person. Make sure it's person. Don't drag it into main. No, no, no. We want it for a person. We want to ask the per each person how many connections do they have. So this function is going to be called, I dragged it in, and we're going to call it count smoking, oh, sorry, don't make it capital, count smoking connections, okay? 
it's going to count the number of smoking connections. Count here is not a honoring title. It's not like Count Dracula. It's count like before the count. I don't know if you got that one. But, um, <laughs> this is, you know, it's saying count the number of my number of smoking connections. Basically, uh, for this person. So each person is going to be equipped with this ability to count their number of smoking connections. Okay. Um, so that's our function. Now, that's our logic. It's, it's going to need some logic to do its job, right? So um, I'd like to put in its logic um, uh, in there, okay? Um, and so we're going to need to tell it how to do its job. And to do that, we have to specify the function body for it. So if you click this, it will be showing in properties. And we open up this one that says function body. Okay. Um, and um, okay, now, now what a pretty pickle I've gotten myself into. Now I've got to show you some code. Um, okay, uh, this this code is at once beautiful and but it might scare you. And I'm afraid of scaring you before lunch. Um, so I'm gonna go through each of my connections and determine if they're a smoker, okay? Um, and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna test, is this person um, a, a, a current smoker, okay? Um, now, in order to do this, uh, I'm trying to figure out um, uh, the, yeah, um, that's fine. I will, I'm going to add one more function that's going to say, am I a smoker? So here we go. I'm going to take function and try to get, try to get, in, and it's going to be called is smoker. Okay. Here we go. And count smoking connections is going to use that to count the number that are a smoker. Okay. 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 And is smoker is going to return a value. It's job in life. When we have a function, it performs some task. And the task of this one is to return a value. And what value is it going to return? It's going to return a value that says whether or not I'm a smoker. Now, remember yesterday I made your acquaintance? Do you remember? Do you remember enjoying the pleasure of acquaintance with type? Type said. In this, you remember int? You remember int? So you remember int. Remember double? There was a double. So an int was used for what? Does anyone remember? A count. It was a count. Uh, a double was used for, yeah, like fractional quantity, like 35.2 or 1.56 or 3.14159261. Um, okay. So here we're going to introduce the third one, a third common one, and it's called a Boolean, okay? Um, it's actually above int there. It's called a Boolean. Does anyone know what a Boolean is? Yeah, it's, yeah true or false, true or false. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna say, if I'm a smoker, I'm gonna return true. If I'm not a smoker, I'm gonna return false. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna, I, I ask, that's why it's called is smoker, I'm gonna return True or false? I'm going to turn true if I am a smoker, false if I'm not. If someone asks me, are you a smoker? I'll, I'll, I'll give them true or false. Are you ready for this? Okay. Hearing no objections. So it's going to, job in life is to return this value. And what value is it going to return? Well, it's going to return. And I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm, how would I know if this person is a smoker right now? What what would I use if 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 I showed you a picture of the of this person and they're in a certain state? How would I know if they're a smoker? Can anyone say if they're a current smoker? If they're in the state current smoker. By the way, I think I should zoom in here. Okay, um, here we go. There we go. Okay. Um, okay. So be as if they're in this state, right? So is smoker, what its job in life is, is going to be, it's going to return smoking state chart. 
That's the name of this date chart. And I'm going to ask, hey, smoking state chart. Oops, sorry. Don't put that divided by. That was a typo. Sorry. Now it's now it's gotten all screwed up. Smoking. Hey, come on. Get don't don't put that divided by sign there. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Smoking state chart dot. So I'm asking it. I'm saying, hey, smoking state chart is state active. I'm asking, hey, is this is is a certain state active? And guess what the state is going to be? Anyone? Current smoker. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna say make it. Oh sure, okay, fine. We'll say uh, current smoker. Okay, current smoker. Yeah, current smoker. Okay, there we go. That's all. So so what did I put there? Could someone put that in the chat? Um, just so people can see it. So in order to figure out, am I a current smoker? I'm going to return whether or not I'm in the current smoking state. This is indicates, by the way, that it's returning a Boolean. Like we, we name functions, we, by the name, we like to communicate what they return. If they return a count or if they return a, is a, a, a Boolean, we, we name them is. For returns of count, we say count smoking penalties, for example. Are we okay with that? So here we have a function. The function's job is to determine if I'm a smoker. And I don't have to, every time use this code, I just call, hey, are you a smoker? No, man. And then we'll know they're not a smoker. Say false or true. Are we okay with that? Okay. Now, Count smoking connections. Um, okay. Now, we need to pick our poisons, Wade. Um, uh, we need to do this one way or the other. Um, there are two ways to do this. There's one way that makes my heart sing. And then there's one way that maybe is a little bit easier for beginners. Um, I'm tempted to do the way that's easier for beginners. Okay? Are we okay with that? Okay, and my heart will recover over lunch. Okay? Okay, thank you. Um, so for account smoking connections, we already know how to determine if someone's a smoker. What we're going to do is loop through, we're gonna go one by one through each of their connections, and we're gonna ask that connection, are they a smoker or not? And we're gonna count up the number that are smokers. Is that okay? Okay. Oh boy. Oh boy. This 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 is I'm not sure which which beginners will like more. This this has some not so nice things to it. Uh um wait, should I do the stream one or should I do the loop? What do you think? I think I'm I'm also torn. I don't know what I would do if I was writing it. But I think the loop is probably easier. I, I think that's right. Let's let, I'll I'll introduce them to the beauty of streams later. Okay. So I'm going to go through one by one and tally up the number of their connections that are smokers. Are you ready? So I'm gonna have I'm gonna I'm gonna have a variable that keeps track of the number that I've tallied up so so far. Are we ready for this? Okay. Int. <laughs> We're gonna have a we're gonna have an integer um, count um, smoking connections, okay? Um, uh, and its initial value is gonna be zero. It's gonna be a variable. This is a variable. I'm I'm gonna have this tally. It's like having a, a blank tally. I'm gonna say, hey, I have zero smoking connections. Um, gosh, I'm glad I haven't eaten lunch yet because this, yeah. Um, anyway, um, okay, um, great. And now we're going to go through, I, I'm going to go through each of my connections. I'm going to figure out if they're a smoker or not. And if so, I, I'll add them to the tally. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay, um, hearing no objections and seeing Amanda taking our photos, uh, that's great. Okay, terrific. Uh, 
That's wonderful. Okay, so we're going to go through each of the connections. Ready? We're going to say four. Okay. I'm going to say person. Thank you, Amanda. That's great. Amanda. Why do I call you Amanda? <laughs> I'm having serious neuronal malfunctions. Okay, thank you. Person on um, connect. Uh, I'm going to uh, call uh, contact um, or person. What should we call them? Uh, person um, P. I'll call them person P in my connections, okay? So it's gonna be uh, in uh, con connections. Um, actually, I think I could just say get connections. This this thing is called up here uh, in connections dot get connections. Um, uh, wait, tell me if you could see a way to, to simplify this, but. Yeah, you, you can hold mid connections. I, exactly. People. It's just, I kind of like to tell them which network they're dealing with so but yeah i know uh i could do that but that's i think is about all you need to do yeah so for each of the connections in this each of the people in this i'm going to call them person p um maybe i'll call them friend just so it's it's got a nice name my friend okay so each each of them is my friend okay now for each of these i want to figure out if they're a smoker or not hmm? Okay, we're going to do this all in the loop. So we got to put these so-called curly braces here. See them? They look kind of like ears if you look at them the right way. You never notice that? Yeah, not until now. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so um, there's actually a right. Well, anyway, I won't go into it. Okay. Um, so. Within this loop, we're going to go one by one, each of my friends. How am I going to figure out if that friend is a smoker? What could I ask them to figure out if they're a smoker? We actually created it already. What is it? I could ask them, I could use what function I already created? Is smoker. Is smoker. That's right. So I could say if friend dot is smoker, is smoker, there it is. Um, oops, hey, where, where'd it go? Okay, is smoker, is, sorry, what, what am I doing? Smoker, is smoker, that's what I want. If it is, what do I have to do? What do I have to do if they're a smoker? I need to tally it up. I need to, I need to add one to this, okay? So I will, I will show you how to add one to this. Now, there's different ways we do this. I will tell you a way that's kind of, it's very common, it's sweet, and you need to know how to do it. I will do plus plus, meaning it gets one more, it increases it by one, okay? So for each of my friend who's a smoker, I increase it by one. I go through all my friends, and then what do I return? What do I return? If, if TS could put it in the chat, that's also welcome. That's also welcome. Okay. What do I return? Anyone? At the end, I return the. You know, Mattias is trying to. Communicate with me. Yes? Uh, oh, yeah, it should return a value. Thank you. What value type should it return? What is its name? Its name is count smoking connections. What type of thing does it need to return? A frag? A count? What is a count? It's a int. Int. Okay, what's the value of the of, of what it should return? The tally, count smoking connections. That's what it will return. Return count smoking connections. That's what I want. Okay, so that that's, again, about as bad as it gets. So we start with an empty tally, a blank slate. We go through each of our friends. We figure out for each friend in turn, call the friend, 
we say, hey, are you a smoker? If so, we tally up. We add one to our tally. That's what this is. Add one to it. Only if they're a smoker. And then we return the number of smoking connections. And that returns the number of connections that are smokers. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Are we ready for that? Are we ready for that? Ready or not? Okay. I think I think we should feel because I, I failed to advise of the Okay, thank you, Wade. Um, build succeeded. Yeah. Now, mind you, Wade, I had, I had said delivery with sent with person with first connections. Yeah, that's right. With malice yeah. or dog. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe someone anyone have trouble building. Yeah, yeah, we're just thinking. okay. So if you go to connections, I had you, some may have missed it, but I set this agent type to be person in connections. So I set them to be connected to persons. I had a hunch, wait, I might need that. In Chinese, they say la ma shur tu. Okay. Okay. Who needs a bit more help? Can I see the function chart? It's in the chat also, uh, but yeah. Okay. Who else needs help online, though? Who needs help online? Oh, uh, Rafat, is that all said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Okay, all good here. Okay, I'm amazed. You folks are I'm doing well. Okay, we're just about done. We're on the cusp of greatness. We're on the cusp of greatness. Okay. Okay. So now we have a way of determining if each person is a smoker, then we have a way of figuring out if the number of connections a given person has that are with smokers that use that way, figuring out if each of the persons is a smoker. This is very emblematic. When we build up code, we build pieces on top of each other. Functions are your friend. Functions allow you to create little bits of logic and then reuse it very conveniently without having to deal with all the details. So we could use this count of smoking connections in lots of places, maybe to graph out the number of number of connections people have with smokers, or to do a histogram of it, or to do a plot of it over time, or to or to use it in initiation. We're going to use it in initiation right now. Are we ready for this? Are we ready for this, ladies and gentlemen? Ready or not, here we come. Ready? Okay. Okay. So if you go to initiation, right now we have initiation rate, okay? What I'm going to put instead is something else um, that's going to write, 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 okay? Um, so I'm going to put in, instead of main.initiation rate, I'm going to put in, I'm thinking the best way to do this, um, we will do initiation rate. Um, I think I will put in, no, we'll call initiation rate. This will be the baseline initiation rate times, this is in the interest of time, we're going to clean up a bit later. The initiation rate times exponent of 1.0 times count smoking connections okay count smoking connections okay so so i will could someone put that in the chat okay so this is going to be a baseline initiation rate now and this is going to be um uh 
some uh, some term. Uh, so if they have one smoking connection, gosh, they're going to be something like 2.7 times higher initiation rate than someone who has uh, zero. Um, if if it's two, it's going to be another 2.7 times more yet. So the number of smoking connections is really going to drive initiation. And we're going to switch the baseline initiation rate to be uh, very, very low. Okay. Um, we're going to, we're going to set it to be uh, low indeed. Okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. So uh, let's go to main and we're going to set initiation rate instead of point oh it's instead of point one we're going to make it point oh oh uh five okay point oh oh five this is gonna be a baseline one and i gotta get you out of here or else the football players are coming for you so so we, we gotta we gotta split this joint quick um but let's build um and now let's let's run it. What do you think you'll see? Anyone? What do you think we'll see? Okay. Okay. Um, okay, we have Oh, yeah. I should have done one more thing. Ah, okay. Um Fair, fair enough. Uh, uh, so, wait, I probably should have had it recalculate that periodically. Eh? But, um, yeah. Um, we are getting clustering of smokers in certain areas, and those smokers tend to, um, to encounter heart disease. So you have a cluster here, for example, a cluster here, an emerging cluster here, uh, etc. Um, uh, they are worsening each other's chance of developing smoking based on peer pressure effects. If I have a connection to smoking, I get more likely to become a smoker myself, and that drives uh, the occurrence of heart disease uh, in me um, uh, eventually. Okay, we're gonna let's let's uh, get you uh, off to the uh, food. And we will we'll reconvene uh, after lunch. So I think we'll do another hour, 15 minutes for lunch um, to give you time to get there. And I think if you go post haste, you should be able to beat the, the, the uh, football team to the goodies. Is that okay? Okay, okay. Great. Thank you folks uh, online. We're going to be um, talking about a little bit of refinement to this model now, but uh, or after lunch, but we're going to break for an hour and 15 minutes now. Thank you. Yeah, good call. We'll see you after after lunch here. Take care there.